Hi there, how's it going? This is Christian with Plan Your Federal Retirement, back with another video with critical concepts. Today, I wanna to talk about what is the best strategy for taking money out of your retirement accounts? What's the best withdrawal strategy? I'll admit, I was kind of geeking out as financial advisors do, reading various articles online, having to do with the best withdrawal strategy. And it had, you know, the 4% rule as one, the dynamic distribution rule, preserving principle rule, and it was arguing for which one was the best, right? And I'm not gonna go into all those different details there, but there was one thing that struck me that I don't think was emphasized enough on this article, which I think is one of the golden rules when it comes to investing, especially as we're working and helping our clients to and through retirement, is the concept of having five years worth of money that's not in the stock market for any money that is planned to be spent in the next five years, right? That's our kind of our golden rule when it comes to investments, that any money that you plan to spend in the next five years does not belong in the stock market. And that's true if you're not retired, and that's true even if you are retired or planning to retire, right? Is making sure that you have five years of distributions not in the stock market, okay? And the reason why this is so important, again, doesn't matter which distribution strategy that you use. Could be, again, dynamic, where you change it up every single year based on how the market performs. It can be a static 4% or 5%. It really doesn't matter. What's important is where that income comes from to generate that income for you. Now, of course, it's going to be different depending on your goals. And that's why we always talk about putting together your retirement income timeline. So that's your action item here for this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you put together your 10-year retirement income timeline to show where's your income coming for over the next 10 years, right? So if you're in this time period, let's just hypothetically say where you're collecting your pension, but you haven't turned on social security, well, you're gonna, your income's gonna look a little bit different. Rather, your income needs are gonna look a little bit different once you turn on that social security income where you might not need quite as much coming from your investments. So that's why it's really important that we put that retirement income timeline together. What I wanted to do now is just illustrate a, a brief concept of dollar cost averaging and dollar cost spending, if you will. While you're still working, while you're still contributing to your investment accounts, to your retirement accounts, whether that's the TSP or Roth IRAs or any other investment accounts, what you're doing is you're you're buying at different intervals, whether the market is up, whether the market is flat, whether the market is down, and you're kind of buy, 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 right? Kind of sporadically, you're contributing, at least inside the TSP, your dollar cost averaging your dollars every two weeks, so you're always buying. And over time, generally speaking, the market is going to go up. If we look in a lens of a short period of time, if we're looking in you know, a, a five-year window, it could be that this five-year window, the market was down, right? But over a 20 plus year time horizon, the market is going to go up. It just is. And we're just continuously putting dollars in. And that's why dollar cost averaging makes a lot of sense. Well, at some point you go to retire, right? And we draw a line here to distinguish us putting new dollars in to when we're selling our investments. So now at this point, we're selling. Sell, 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 sell. Right? And again, over time, over a 20 plus year time horizon, it's going to go up. But there are going to be time periods where you're selling your investments to generate retirement income and the market is down. So the critical point is what do you do right here? At this point, what do you do right here? If you, at this point, sell your stocks, you are not going to recover that principle. It is going to permanently be reduced as a result of that. And if you continue to sell your stocks and not pay attention to if they're up or have lost value, then when the market goes down next, you're going to have lesser and lesser principle that's available to you, right? versus if during this time frame between here and here, 
in this time frame, if you stopped taking money out of your stocks and instead went to our golden rule up here, which is to have five years worth of money that's not in the stock market, if you reached in and you had cash, bonds, right, some money markets, something that's not in the stock market, and then that's what you use during this time frame when the market was down, well, then you never sold your investments at a loss. And when it recovers, because it will at some point, when it recovers, then you replenished what it was at this point that you took out, whether that's two years or three years, four, maybe even five years worth of distributions that you just had to deplete. Well, then at that point, you're able to recover from your stocks being down, you never realized those losses, you're in a much better situation and have a much better chance of success, not outliving your money in retirement. So again, the critical concept here is regardless of whatever your distribution rate is, we need to have money on the sidelines, at least at a minimum, five years worth of distributions that aren't in the stock market um, for the money that you plan to spend over the next five years. So. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have questions related to this, feel free to leave your question below in the comment section. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you get our latest videos that we put out. And until next time, happy planning.